All right, hello art people. This is our final day on our calculating area Minecraft self-portraits. And all we have left to do is add final touches, maybe add a layer to one of our pieces that we feel like is a little bit too see-through for our liking. And we're gonna do this together. So go ahead and get your palette. And you can get a cup of water to put in between you and your art neighbor. Okay, and then you're gonna think about what do you wanna work on first. So let's think. For me, I'm going to work on the frame for this window here. Okay, and I'm gonna think what color do I want it to be? I think I'm gonna do a gray. Oh. Once you have the color that you want in your brain, you're going to get that color out of the blue basket. Now it might be a color that you need to make. And remember, we're only allowed to mix two colors at a time. So I'm going to get my black and my white. You can go ahead and get the bottle that you need. For about a half dollar size of either your one color that you need or the two colors that you need to mix. I'll give you time to go ahead and pour either one or two paints in there. Okay. Now if you are mixing your two colors to make a new color, you can grab your brush. If you're making gray, it's going to be mostly white with a little bit of black, but maybe you're mixing two other colors. Mix them together in one of these big sections here. We're mixing it up. Okay, there we go. Okay, you should have it mixed up by now, or maybe it was already ready to go. Now you can take your brush and start painting that section. You're gonna hold it, your brush like you're holding a pencil. Are painting. So as we paint here, let's do some review questions. So we've already calculated and learned about our area. So who can raise your hand? And tell me what the area means. What does area mean? If you said that it was the inside of a shape, that would be correct. So for instance, my face here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units. That's how many units are inside the shape. Okay. You should probably be done with your first color by now. So, what do we need to do when we switch colors? We're going to get our water, swish, swish, swish. We don't clink. We slide, slide. If we clink, clink, then water goes everywhere. We don't want that. Then we're going to pick another part of our painting to work on. So, for me, I think I'm going to work on my books. I can put my brush in my water while I get my paint out. Remember, we're only getting one color out at a time. I'm not going to think to myself, oh, I want this, 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 all these different colors from my books. I'm going to pour them all out right away. No, no, no. Because you never know the we might have a fire drill all of a sudden, and then our class, we, should, we might need to clean up right when we get back in, and then you put all this paint out, and we've wasted all this paint. So that's why we just want to put a little bit at a time on our palette because we never know when we might have to clean up early. So don't assume that you are going, just don't put all this paint on your palette like and fill every single one and just assume that you're going to use all of it. You might not end up using all of it and so that's a waste. So we're keeping them in the bottles until we know for sure we're going to use them. So I picked out green. 
So I'm going to do all my green books first. So go ahead and pick out a color for your the next part of your painting. Or two colors if you're mixing two colors. Pour them on here. If you need to mix it, go ahead and mix it. And we're painting. And we're, we don't need to dip our paintbrush in water a lot for this type of paint. This is We're using acrylic and tempera paint. This paint doesn't need water like our watercolor does. If, in fact, if we put too much water on our paper, it's actually going to make a hole in the paper. So we only paint when it's dry. If, if we got water on our paper, then we don't want to paint on it until it dries. You're just going to use one color at a time, like I said. All right, let's do some more trivia. What element of art are we focusing on for this lesson? And remember, the elements of art are the ingredients that we need to put art together. So some elements of art, here is the list of them. Line, shape, space, color, texture, value. So raise your hand if you can tell me what element of art are we focusing on for this lesson. If you said shape, that is correct. Okay. We have finished this color. You might be ready to switch colors now. So when we switch colors, we swish, swish, swish. If you already have the paint on your palette, you can slide, slide, and get it. I'm going to get a different color. I'm going to get the pink. Now, let's say you don't have any white spaces left. Let's pretend that all my white spaces are filled up, but I still get to do more painting. Well, what I can do is I can look and see what's a little bit too brush strokey for my liking. What, what looks kind of messy? Let's say I want my floor to be less brush strokey. Well, what I could actually do next is get myself some blue paint and because this is dry remember we're not allowed to paint on things if they're wet but this is dry so I can take my brush and I can go ahead and do another layer and you'll notice that if you do a second layer it looks really thick and not see through anymore and super clean like that so that's called having good craftsmanship is when something is super duper clean and tidy like that and it doesn't look messy. Craftsmanship is like the opposite of messy. So notice the difference. Between this first layer here and then this second layer over here. It's a lot more solid we call that. Remember when you go to the sides of your the edges of your paper you're gonna lift it up a little bit. When you paint on the edge because if you don't lift it up first, then you're going to get paint on the tables, and we don't want that. Getting a little paint on the tables is okay if it's an accident. But if you're not even trying to keep the tables clean, then that's not okay. If you're trying to keep the table clean, and you have an accident and get the table messy, look, I just had a little accident. I got a little blue down there. I'm just going to wipe with my fingers before it dries. That's fine. Same thing with our hands. If you accidentally get paint on your hands, that's okay. But you have to try to keep your hands clean. You're not allowed to put paint on your hands on purpose. Okay. Now, the element of art that we are focusing on is shape. So if you said shape, you are correct. So if you thought shape when I asked that question, you are correct. Now we watched a video, a really cool song, and it went, let's get into shape, shape, shape. And we learned about two different types of shapes in that video. Raise your hand if you can tell me one of the types of shapes that we learned about. If you said, okay, well, let me, I don't want to say the answer yet. 
Raise your hand if you can tell me the other type of shape that we learned about. Good. If you said geometric and organic for the two types of shapes, that would be correct. So that looks a lot better down there. You don't have to do another layer on your entire painting, but that is a really good way to make it look a lot cleaner. So now I'm going to go back and work on my bookshelf some more. Okay, let's do another trivia. So, what? how would you describe what a geometric shape is? The definition. Don't tell me what one of the geometric shapes are. I want to know... How would you define the word geometric shape without just telling me one of the shapes? Raise your hand if you can describe what a geometric shape is. If someone were to ask you, what's a geometric shape? What does that mean? What does it mean? Okay. If you said that a geometric shape is a shape that has a name, it has angles, has sides, has some straight sides, then you'd be correct. The only geometric shape that doesn't have straight sides, I believe, is a circle, perhaps an oval as well. But the rest of the geometric shapes do have straight sides. They are diagonal, vertical, and horizontal straight lines not necessarily wavy floopy lines so can raise your hand and tell me besides circle because I just said that what is the name can you tell me a name of one of the geometric shapes okay I'm gonna list the geometric shapes for you now well there's a lot but I'm gonna list some of them Square, rectangle, trapezoid, any quadrilateral, hexagon, I don't know if I said rectangle, I think I did. So, when we talk about shapes, we're talking about flat, two-dimensional shapes, not three-dimensional. So a cube, it's not really a shape, it's more of a form, is what we call it in art. Now, in math, they do call 3D shapes shapes. They call them 3D shapes. They call 3D shapes 3D shapes. So in math, if you're taking a math test and it, you see a picture of a cube and they ask what that is, you would say a cube or you would say a 3D shape. In art, if I gave you a test, which I'm not going to, and there's a picture of a cube and I said, what is this? You could either say cube or you could say a form. That's what we call them in art when it's a three-dimensional, it takes up space. So this lesson is not really about forms. This lesson is about shapes, which is in art, that just means it's flat, it's two-dimensional. Okay, let's go ahead and switch colors if you're ready to. If you're still working on that one, that's fine. I'm going to use a uh, yellow for this. And now here's a trick too. Let's say I wanted to do brown, but I didn't have a brown. You can mix two complementary colors to get brown. You might be asking, what's a complementary color? Well, you have to use the color wheel to figure it out or your brain if you have it memorized. I have a color wheel on the back of my phone so that's useful. If you mix two colors that are opposite on the color wheel of each other i.e. complementary colors then you can make brown. So for instance, let's say I want brown. What two colors could I use to make that instead of pouring new paint? Well, purple and yellow are opposite each other on the color wheel so they'll make brown. So just keep that in mind too.
And if you're like, no, mine still looks yellow, you're incorrect. Well, put more purple. And see how it's turning brown. And you might say, no, mine looks purple. Well, put more yellow. There we go. Now we have brown. So now if I wanted to do a brown book, I could. Like that. Which, this doesn't really have a whole lot of contrast with my bookshelf, so probably not really a great choice. But I just wanted to show you how to mix two colors. So I'm going to actually do yellow, though. That's too much paint. So, let's do another trivia question. So we talked about what a geometric shape is. That's what we're using in this lesson, right? This lesson is all about geometric shapes. And we'll do another lesson about the other type of shape. Can anyone tell me, what was the other type of shape called? Raise your hand. Okay, the answer is organic. You can raise your hand and tell me, how would you describe what an organic shape is if I were to ask you, what if I said, I don't know what that is, can you explain it to me? My, my teacher keeps saying, organic shapes, I don't know what she's talking about. Can you explain it to me? What would you say? Raise your hand. So, another word for organic shape is actually freeform shape. So, if you switch schools and go to another school, your teacher might actually teach you about freeform shapes instead. Well, we're teaching the same thing, we just have different names for them. It's the same thing. An organic shape is a shape that's kind of more like w not really perfect, it doesn't have a name. So, it's more of a shape you would make by just drawing a line that's like wavy, maybe. It has a lot more curves in them. Usually it's just kind of like, loo, 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 loo. I just call it kind of like more of a squiggly shape. It would be more of an organic shape. And the shapes that we see in nature are organic shapes. So clouds are organic. Flowers are, are, are organic. This should be about what your palette looks like. You shouldn't really need to use more than these small rectangles in one class. You shouldn't need more than six colors to use in one class. And you really probably aren't mixing more than one or two colors. So these big sections here can be used for mixing. These over here are used for the pure colors from the bottle. So just keep that in mind. Because again, if you're making more paint than that, you're probably going to accidentally be wasting paint. You're not going to be able to use it all. We want to use the paint that we get out. We don't want to waste paint. You don't want to accidentally be a class that uses all the paint up so the other classes don't have any paint because that's not very fair, right? We want to all use a little bit so that we all we have enough for the whole school to paint with. All right. You can also paint this, your area that you have your um, units in, your form, your math in, but you know, you just want it to be a really thin layer because you don't want to cover up all those words. In fact, if you would rather just lightly color that with a colored pencil, or you can just leave a blank. Maybe you just, ha I just have a white rug. I think I'm going to leave that blank. Now for the rest of the paper, you need to fill it all up with color. Okay. The only things that I really are am okay with not having color on them are the where you put your math. If you have white eyes, white eyes, that's fine. White sneakers, that's fine. Okay. If the white is a design choice, that's okay. But your sky, it shouldn't be blue and then white and then green if you're doing outside. It should not have a green stripe in the middle of your sky or a white stripe in the middle of your sky. The sky needs to go down the ground. Your wall doesn't need to be white. 
Use white and a little bit of brown and make a taupe color like mine if you want like a white wall. Okay. So, don't do a whole lot of white because that's kind of just lazy. If you want to have a few little things that are white, okay. Clouds in the sky, that's fine. But you can't just paint the person and then be done and say, oh, well, it's just because everything else is white. No, no, no. Don't be lazy. Okay? Let's do a good job here. Alright, thanks for watching.